time, Sean, when you find a good woman or you find a good man that can tolerate all your idiosyncrasies, you got to hang on for dear life because then it's hard to find another one. So my advice is a happy woman, you married woman. You have to I'm look smiling. Happy. See. <laughs> It seems like every year around this time of awareness, a story goes viral and observers tend to forget about the victim. This happened before last year when a man shot his lover and instead of shedding light on the seriousness of the topic at hand, the suspect's court clips were made a mockery. That law enforcement tampered with evidence to meet their such high burden of proof and reshared over 30 million times. Well, it happened again. A short video reshared by a TikToker showcased how a joke on TV didn't age too well. This didn't age well. Constantly like a child in my People own love, house. People love, they yell at each other all the time. Oh, but that's they true. Like Ask him, he's been married for how long? Over 20 something years. Over 20 something Look at him though, he look mad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look happy, brother. You don't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's very happy. Sherman Chow, a former TV show bailiff and current Harris County deputy charged with his wife's murder, now ordered not to attend her funeral. Renard Spivey appeared before a judge today. He's facing very specific rules for his bond. David Gonzalez explains. Following that clip, there was no further information available about the deputy's verdict or sentencing. But most importantly, who is Patricia Ann Marshall? Did Patricia and her family ever receive justice? Patricia Ann Marshall was the fifth and only girl in her family. According to her parents, she was a joy because after years of trying, they were finally blessed with a baby girl. Patricia attended Houston Independent School District. She went to Paul Lawrence Dunbar Elementary, James Ryan Middle School, and the Almighty Jack Yates Senior High School. She was quiet but well known in her community with having four older brothers. At the tender age of 15, she welcomed her only child, a daughter. While raising her daughter, she started working at Methodist Hospital, and for 31 years, she stayed at that hospital and worked faithfully to cultivate her career. Rising through the ranks to become the executive administrative assistant to the Methodist supply chain manager, Patricia's family and friends said she was always evolving. Pat, as some of her friends would call her, said she was also well-traveled and involved in everything. And my sister was just a joy. I mean, a lovable person. According to her brother, Mr. Washington, she was heavily involved in her local church and in photography. She had a love for health and wellness that showed through her youthful appearance. She would even participate in walks and runs every year. It was one point in her life where she thought she had everything, including love. Patricia later met a man named Spivey, and the two got married in 2015. According to Harris County Records, this is Spivey's third marriage. Records also show that the veteran deputy has worked with the Harris County Sheriff's Office since 1996. Spivey was hired as a detention officer in 96 and became a deputy in 98. Throughout his career, he was primarily assigned to the detention command, mostly serving in court operations. During his career, he eventually went off to acting. According to his bio, he eventually landed a reoccurring role as a bailiff on a popular TV show called Justice for All with Judge Christina Perez from 2012 to 2016. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you, Bernard. That show is the center of the story today. During an episode of Justice for All close to 10 years ago, comedian Sean Harris appeared in courts about having his heart broken over a woman he loved. What he did not know, he made a joke on TV that would eventually resurface with truth. So then nine months go by and you don't, you, she doesn't pay rent. Why don't you tell her? Pay rent. I did, I mean, I kept saying, I mean, every month it would be something different, you know? Like I'm what? Like, I'm like, man, So I you mean, let her go nine months without paying rent? You know, in the state, of, you can't put a woman out with a child in the state of Texas. Believe me, I tried. You can't. You can't. They, 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 
I call you the police. You know, I think that's all talk. I don't think no, you would put the, her up. No, the cops tried to kick me out of my own house. Really? What? <clears throat> I mean, when I wanted to have an eviction thing, I, I tried to make a phone call to find out some information on how to do it. And they said, well, most likely, you're going to wind up leaving the residence. Really? Because she got a child. Uh -huh. Is that true? <laughs> Expert witness? <laughs> so, what am I going to do? What side are you on? <laughs> how many? How many? <laughs> How many times did you ask her for the money? How could it be true love when I'm getting yelled at constantly like a child in my People own love, house? People in love, they yell at each other all the oh, time. Oh, but that's true. Ask him, he's been married for how long? Over 20-something years. Over 20-something years. Look at him, though. He look mad. <laughs> you don't look happy, brother. You don't look happy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's very happy. Okay, all right, let's get back to the claim. After reviewing details and facts and hearing the judge say 20 plus years, I do not believe the marriage he was referring to in this video was Patricia's. However, within the years, the couple would eventually start to have disagreements. Patricia's brother said that the couple had started fighting over her suspicions of her husband possibly being on steroids and having an affair because the lack of intimacy in their relationship. Her brother told a private investigator that Renner had previously told him that his sister was counting his pills and claiming that he was sleeping with someone else. He said if she talked to me like I'm a child again, that incredible hope gonna come out and it ain't gonna be good. I've heard him whining and stuff before, so <laughs> I didn't take it serious like that. And sadly, on July 28, 2019, the conflicts continued. Houston police said the two got into a fatal incident, leaving Patricia deceased. But when Spivey called 911, he said it was accidental. Washington says he talked to Renard on the phone for hours before the shooting and now regrets he didn't do more. And she takes me, I didn't, I didn't call back. It still kind of bothers me. It's hard, but um, life goes on. You know, we got to live not just for, for us now, we live for her. Court records show that Spivey called 911 at about 3 a.m. Sunday to request service saying that he and his wife fought over a weapon and he accidentally shot her. Once police arrived at the scene, they found Patricia deceased in the master bedroom closet. Spivey was taken to a hospital for a wounded leg. He told officers that Patricia had shot him in the leg as they were tussling with a weapon. He told officers that he had been arguing all day and Spivey's attorney also claimed that he tried his best to revive his wife after she was shot. However, detectives said his story was inconsistent with an accident. They added that near Patricia were her cell phone, three shell casings, and a firearm that was placed on top of a clothes hampers. Houston police also thought it was odd that there was an older man at the home when the incident occurred, but he told investigators he didn't hear or see anything. Furthermore, the medical examiner indicated that Patricia had been shot twice, not once. The report also noted that she had minor bruising around her wrist. Even local reporters asked Spivey's attorney to explain how to is accidental. And when you say it was an accidental shot, what is, investigators now are saying she was shot twice. What is the reasoning behind that? Yeah, I don't accident? know the facts because I've read reports that uh, uh, one shot went through her arm, the other went in her chest, and then for 20 or 30 minutes he's on 911 trying to revive her, him and pumping her. So I know those are facts, but I don't know exactly what order the shots were fired. Eventually, Spivey was booked into a jail that night and charged with his wife's murder. He was released two days later on a $50,000 bond. Bernard Spivey made his first court appearance this morning to hear conditions of his bond. Spivey lived into the courtroom this morning. His attorney says his leg is still sore after suffering a 
shot wound during an alleged domestic disturbance with his wife Patricia involving a gun. Inside the courtroom, the judge set several conditions for Spivey's bond. It includes wearing a GPS monitor, turning over his passport within the next seven days, a curfew from 3 p.m. to 9 a.m. The judge also said Spivey cannot have contact with Patricia's family. That means he can't attend her funeral. Prosecutors had initially asked for the bill of $100,000 because they said he was a danger to the community and a flight risk. But his defense attorney insisted his client was a good person, surrounded by the support of Spivey's family. He wants to place on the bond and have the judge, when he's here, rule on those conditions. But uh, Mr. Spivey is a, a very, very good man with over 30 years experience in law enforcement, no criminal record. Um, so we're all trying to determine now how the went off. The is likely to go off accidentally. There's been a lot of uh, dispute about that in the media. But anyway. Following his bond, there was no further information available about the further findings in the case or any indication of where he is today. During that time, court documents obtained by ABC 13 did state that Spivey was ordered to have a mental health evaluation. They believe he could have a mental illness or perhaps an intellectual disability. And this request wasn't even from his attorney. The mental evaluation test, was that something that you initiated or? No. Or no, and it said it was filed under seal, so I didn't respond to it, and I don't want to go into that right now. Uh, it's, it's not, it wasn't my request. As of today, Spivey has been ordered to not have contact with Patricia's family. Again, there was no further information available, so fast forwarding to today, many people are asking, did Patricia Marshall receive justice? Ivy's nephew said the deputy's loved ones have offered his wife's family their condolences. Anything that we can do, because we are hurt as well. This was a loving family before this tragic event, and uh, we are just as hurt. Patricia Spivey's brother told me yesterday that he hopes the deputy's arrest is the first step in getting justice for his sister. Thank you.